Hi everyone, Helen from crystalsandcrochet.com here and welcome to part 6 and 7 of Whispers from the Past Crochet Along. Okay, so the reason that I've put two weeks together is because all of the panels that you're going to make are the same except that the side panels are longer than the panels for the top and the bottom. Okay, but they're all worked in exactly the same way, just a different number of stitches. If you are working with the purely patriotic yarn pack, then you will be working these panels all in one solid colour. Okay, so no joining and no ends to work away apart from the first and last end. For the other panels, um, I'm going to show you different ways of starting to work in rows, different ways of changing colour at the end of the row, and different ways of starting some of your rows. Okay, so there's going to be quite a lot covered in this video. Okay, so um, let's have a look where we're going to start. Okay, so if you um, are like me and you prefer to start with um, a starting stitch rather than a chain start, that's great where you're using double crochets, but it, I've never found it works that well with trebles. So we'll see as we go along. <clears throat> okay, so... To start with, um, you can decide whether you want to make a number of chains and work into the back bump, which is what the pattern says, or if you want to, you can start with foundation double crochet. Completely up to you, which you do. I'm going to show you both ways. Um, so you can then decide how you want to do it. Okay, so if we're going to work into the back bump, we're just going to make the number of chains that the pattern asks for, which is 52. Okay, so, whoops, I split my yarn there. Not a good start. Okay. So you're just going to carry on and make 52 chains all the way along. I'm going to get to 52 and then um, come back and show you how to start, okay? Because you really don't want to watch me make 52 chains. Okay, so I've chained 52. Now if you turn your chain over Let's bring it up really close so that you can see. Okay, there's the top of the chain. And as you see, as we turn it, it almost looks as if it's got a spine running along the back of it. And that is the back bump. Okay, so it's the back part of the chain. The back bump there. And that's what we're going to work into. Because then it gives us a lovely neat edge for our joining that we're going to do to the rest of our project. Okay, so we are going to double crochet into the fourth back bump from the hook. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. So let's go in there. Oops, let's start again. Go in there and make a double crochet. Okay, so we've gone into the fourth one which means we've got a chain three there at the beginning that counts as our first double crochet. Okay, so we now, we've got two here, so we now need to make 
another 48 double crochets along so that we've got a total of 50. So each time just working into that back bump and if I just do a few if this is something you've not done before you'll see what happens. Here we go. Okay so there's the top of our work with our normal loops on the top of our stitches and then if we look at the bottom it's exactly the same. Okay so it means that we've actually got full stitches that we can work into here along the bottom which makes it really good for joining whether we're joining to um, squares or to other solid pieces or whether we're wanting to which we will do in in our case we'll want to work into um, these stitches to make a border as well okay so just carry on all the way along and double check your stitch count and make sure that you've got 50 stitches okay so that's the the first way that you can do it let me just show you just grab another color quickly the other way make a slip knot and pop it on your hook okay so the other way is to make a foundation row now as with everything there are different ways of doing this this is my way okay so you're going to chain two okay now for me it doesn't matter what sort of foundation stitch I'm doing I always start with a chain two okay so let's just start again Okay, so we've got slip knot on hook and then we're literally going to chain one, two. Okay, now because we're going to make a foundation double crochet, that means we need to yarn over the hook. And then we're going to go in to that first loop right next to the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and make our chain and then yarn over and through two loops twice okay so now you can see that we've got a V at the bottom I can't see it very clearly but we've got a V at the bottom here so yarn over and put your hook through that V yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and make your chain. Okay so you can see there's a chain starting to form at the bottom of our work. Yarn over and make your stitch exactly as you normally would. Okay, yarn over through the chain at the bottom yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, make a chain, yarn over, make your stitch. Okay, so there's three um, parts to the stitch. Into the loops at the bottom, yarn over, pull up a stitch, yarn over, make a chain, yarn over, make your stitch. So for every stitch you've got to make sure that you're doing those three movements. Okay, through, pull up a loop, make a chain and make your stitch. Okay, and that's your foundation double crochet. Now the, that chain two at the beginning doesn't count as a stitch. So this is your first stitch here. Okay, so totally up to you. You can either do the foundation double crochet or you can 
do into the back bumps which is the way that I'm going to work it. Okay so either way go right the way along and double check that you have 50 double crochet. Okay and I will join up again, I'll catch up with you again when I get to the end there. Okay so I've worked all the way along my chain right into that very very last back bump and I've got 50 stitches. Now stitch markers are going to be your best friend whilst working in rows. So that row that you've just done is the right side. So pop a stitch marker around the post of one of the stitches in the middle. Okay, this is really going to help you when you're joining your squares and joining to your main piece of work later on. Okay, so pop that stitch marker into the front around one of the posts of those stitches and leave it there. Okay, now at the end where we started, okay, remember this chain three is our first stitch. Okay, so take a stitch marker and pop it through those loops of that first stitch, so through the top of the chain three. Okay, as you come and you work back towards this other end, particularly if you are a beginner with crochet, it's ever so easy to miss that last stitch. So by moving your stitch markers up and putting them into the first stitch of every row that you make, it will help you when you come back to get into the right place. Okay, so that is row one. And as we're going to go on to row two, we're going to turn our work. So we literally just flip it over and chain three. And that becomes our first double crochet again. Or if you want to, you can make a starting double crochet. And this is how I make mine, okay? Chain one and turn. Pull your hook up slightly and take it out of the loop. Put your hook around your working yarn, bring it back in front. Well, let me see if I can just get my hands a little bit clearer for you to see. Okay, so we've chained one hook out of the loop, hook round the working yarn and then pull it back in front of that loop and put your hook back in the loop. So you've got a loop, your working yarn in the middle and then another loop. Okay, because if you were going if you're going to make a double crochet, you're going to have two loops on your hook. Okay? So make sure your working yarn is in between those two loops. And then come right into that very first stitch and make a double crochet. Okay? And there is the top of your stitch. Okay? So by making a starting double crochet it actually ends up very slightly fatter than a normal stitch but once you've made a join and you've come in around here it will look exactly the same as all of the others. Okay, So if you're going to do a chain 3 start you don't make a stitch in here because that is your first stitch. Okay. So then we're just going to double crochet across 
in every single stitch. So we're going to have 50 double crochet again. Okay, now again we've been working in the round so we've been working on the right side of our stitches all the time where the stitch loop, if you're right handed like I am, the stitch loop is to the right of the stitch. If you're left handed it sits to the left of the stitch but it's on top and before the post of the stitch. When you turn your work to work in rows everything swung opposite. Okay, So the top of the stitch is now after the post. It's now sitting to the left or if you're left handed it will sit to the right. Okay, So it's another reason that people get a little bit confused about where the last stitch in any row is because they don't think about this fact when we're constantly turning. Here where we've got the right side our stitch is before the post and once we've turned and we're working back in the opposite direction our stitch is after the post. Okay, So just carry on all the way to the end and I will catch up with you just as I get to the end before I do that last stitch to show you about changing colours at the end of your row. Okay, this is where it's very easy to think that you've come to the end because you've made your stitch into that last stitch there but this chain three was our first stitch so there's another stitch that's got to go into here. Okay, so we can just pop that stitch marker out for a moment. And then we're going to go under those two loops, that's it, and in to that chain three. Okay, so if you use your stitch markers in the end you know, in the first stitch of every row that you make and you gently just stagger them and move them up, you will keep completely straight sides to your work. Okay, for those of you that are following the yarn packs, as I said, with a purely um, patriotic, you'll be working these panels in all cream. For those of you that are using the other colourways, this is the Eileen square that we made last week, you'll notice that the top and bottom of these panels are done in the same colour as those last two rounds of the Eileen square were. So it gives us a continuity with our colour when we join onto our blanket here. Okay. Okay, now again, choices, choices, choices. You can either cut your yarn and join at the beginning of the next round with a standing stitch. And then you will have quite a lot of um, ends to work away because you're going to be changing colour a few times with this. Or the way that I do it, so that I don't have any ends to work away at all is to make a magic knot. Now I know some people throw their hands up in horror at the thought of knots but these knots will sit along the edge of your work here and when you make the join you will cover those knots completely. But if you make the magic knot correctly it will never come undone. Okay, even with really silky, slippery yarns. But with the Stylecraft Special, both with the Double Knit and the Aran, the Magic Knot works brilliantly. Okay, so just gently pull up. Don't overstretch, okay? Just gently pull up about an inch. Take out your hook and cut your yarn and pull away your working yarn. OK, 
okay and then you just need to undo that last stitch so I'm going to pop my hook back in there so it doesn't all come undone okay so just undo that last stitch and then take your next colour yarn and you're going to join the end of the yarn first here okay so you go with the new colour under the old colour over the old colour over the new colour under and through pull it up tight okay and then just push it back now you're going to join the old colour to the new yarn so the old colour goes under the new colour over the old colour under the old colour now this is the bit where you need to remember that bit that you cut was only about an inch long okay so just really gently work your knot until you've just got that inch and then pull tight take hold of the old yarn and the new yarn and pull okay stretch your yarn out and then with your scissors you're literally going to cut right up next to that knot okay as close as you possibly can so that oops I'll just hold that up okay you're as close as you can be and if I pull on that that's not going to come undone I'd actually break the yarn before the knot came undone okay and then just rework that final stitch let's get back under that chain loop okay and so as you complete that stitch up comes the new colour and there's the knot sitting in the back okay so once we join that knot is going to be covered in the join we won't see it or feel it so it's up to you you can either use the magic knot and join like this so you don't have any tail ends to work away or you can work your tail ends away very easily just by working them down and coming along um, but because there's going to be colour changes it is a little bit more difficult um, you're not for instance going to want to work blue away under here because you will be able to see it okay so let's move on to round three okay now in the pattern it says join with a standing treble in the first stitch okay so because we've already joined here we need to chain four one two three four that counts as a treble okay so it's a chain three for a double crochet and a chain four for a treble okay now we're going to work exactly the same triangle mesh pattern that we used last week in the Eileen squares so that chain four is our treble we now need to chain two okay so that counts as this first stitch here we're then going to skip that next stitch and we're going to single crochet in to that stitch okay so that one is our treble that's our skip stitch that's our single crochet chain two skip a stitch treble in the next stitch chain two skip a stitch single crochet in the next stitch chain two skip a stitch treble in the next stitch okay so really simple 
easy pattern. Okay, and exactly the same for this week. We're working with 50 stitches for, hang on, let me just whiz my pattern up. For the longer panels that you need to make, um, you're going to chain 76. Okay, and it will give you a stitch count of 74 double crochet. Okay, but it all the pattern repeat works exactly the same whether you're doing the shorter end panels or the longer side panels. Okay, so just carry on all the way across and I'll catch up with you once I get over here. Okay, okay, so we've done 12 repeats coming along and we finish with that treble. Okay, and then going to chain two and single crochet in that last stitch. Okay, so on this very last one there's not a skipped stitch. So single crochet either into your starting double crochet or chain three that you've done there and also just make sure you put a stitch marker into the fourth chain that we did at the beginning or into the stop top of your standing treble if you started with a standing treble. Okay, so that's row three done. So now we're going to turn our work again. So we're going to chain five Okay, and turn. Okay, so this chain five counts as a treble plus chain one. So again, we want to put our stitch marker into that fourth chain. Okay, and that's going to be the beginning of our new row. Okay, now again, remember how we did um, the triangle mesh last week. We're going to single crochet into the treble, chain one, and treble into the single crochet. chain one and single crochet into the treble so that we're getting that nice square mesh again. Okay so carry on all the way along and you're going to finish at this end with a single crochet into that fourth chain where we've put the stitch marker. Okay so all the way along and I'll catch back up with you at that end. Okay so there's the end of round four and as you can see we're nice and square and straight on both ends of our work. Okay so now we're going to repeat these two rows again so that we're going to have four rows all together of our mesh pattern. So for round five, we're going to turn and chain six. Two, three, four, five, six. Move your stitch marker up to the one, two, three, fourth. That's that one. Oops, come on, in you go. There we are. Okay, so we've chained six, which counts as a treble plus chain two. And now we're just going to single crochet into the treble, chain two, and 
and treble into the single crochet. Okay, so again, really simple, easy repeat. You should be well into the swing of doing this now. Just always remembering you've got to do that chain two between every stitch. Okay, so again, work your way all the way along to the end and then I'll catch up with you again once we're ready to turn and come back for the next row. Okay, so we've come all the way along and finished with a single crochet in the fourth chain of that chain six where we started there. So now our next row, row six, we're going to start exactly as we did with row four and we're going to chain two, three, four, five. Okay, put your stitch marker into the fourth chain. One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, so we've now got our treble and chain one. So we're going to single crochet into that treble, chain one, and treble down into that single crochet. Chain one, single crochet into the treble. Okay, so you've got this by now. Okay, so all the way across and then I will join up with you again when we get to the end because again we're going to change colour. So I'll just go over the magic knot with you again one more time. Okay, so finished row six and I've made my single crochet into the fourth chain there. So again, I'm just going to pull that up an inch, take my hook out, cut through, pull out the working yarn. Now because this is only a single crochet that's going to be quite difficult to work with so I'm also going to undo the chain one and then put my hook in to the treble there. Let's just get this out the way so you can see nice and clearly. Okay so here's my new colour. So I'm going to join my new colour to my old colour first. Okay, so new colour under the old colour, over the old colour, over the new colour, under the new colour. Okay, let me show you just again once more. Under, over, over and under. Okay, and pull that nice and tight and whiz it up to the end. Now you're going to join the old colour to the new colour. Okay, so it's always join the new colour first, then join the old colour. Okay, so under the new colour, over the old colour, under the old colour. And again, just gently and slowly roll that along and ease it along until you've got that inch. Hold the old yarn and the new yarn and pull it up really tight. Stretch apart so you've got this is our working yarn here, there's our two tail ends there, and I'm going to cut right up next to that knot. Okay. Okay, so I undid the chain one and the single crochet, so I'm going to chain one, 
and then I'm going to single let's take that stitch marker out and make life a bit easier for myself single crochet in to the fourth chain and then as I yarn over there's my new colour there's my knot sitting neatly tucked in to the back of my work okay but as I said before obviously if you want to um, jo uh, work away your ends do a different type of join absolutely completely up to you okay so round seven you can either start with a standing double crochet a starting double crochet or with a chain three okay so again I'm going to do a starting double crochet so I'm going to chain one turn my work take my hook out around the working yarn and back behind my loop so that the working yarn is in between those two loops and just pull it down so that you're nice and neat with your two loops and your working yarn coming through in between those two loops and then your first double crochet is made right into that very first stitch so you've got no skinny sides and no gaps and then stitch marker in because that's my first stitch okay and then again very very simple we're going to double crochet into each chain one space space and each stitch across and we're going to do that 24 times okay so we've got into the chain one space into the stitch that's one into the chain one space into the stitch that's two and whoops again and that's three or if you want to you're going to have a final stitch count of 50 for this short panel um, obviously it's going to be slightly more 72 for your long panel for your side panels so if you want to just count your stitches as you go across so we've got one two three four five six seven so far work all the way across and make sure that you make a double crochet in that fourth chain at the end there okay so you're going to finish with a double crochet in there but you're not going to make one in that chain space you're going to go straight into that fourth space okay work your way across and I will catch up with you when we get back here okay so that's 24 repeats done plus the first stitch that we made so so far there we've got 49 stitches okay so we're going to skip that last chain one space and make our last double crochet into the fourth chain of that chain five okay and then straight on to the next round where we're going to turn our work and again either chain three or make a starting double crochet whichever you prefer and let's just pop our marker back in and double crochet in each stitch across so we're forming stripes of double crochet in between our panels 
of triangle mesh. Okay, so just keep going right the way across. Okay. Okay, so with the pattern, you're going to repeat from row three. Okay, ignore the first two rows there. You're going to repeat from row three to row eight twice more. Okay, it's going to give you a total of 20 rows in your panel. So keep your eye on which colours you're using where, because for instance with the paint box, after the pomegranate, we're going to do violet for the next lot of mesh, then we're going to do another two rows in the pomegranate, then we're going to do um, the blue again, and then we're going to do the shrimp again. So just keep your eye on which colours are going where, um, and there we go. Okay, so once I've finished this panel completely, I will come back to you. Okay, so there we are, <coughs> all finished. Once you're done, put a stitch marker in the stitch each end at the top and each end at the bottom and you've still got that one showing you that's the bottom right side. Okay, that is going to help you a lot with joining and particularly with um, joining onto the main part of the blanket and then also when we work the border. Okay, so leave those stitch markers in there um, for the next few weeks. Okay, so now we just need to lightly block this before we join it on. So at the moment there's just a little bit of size difference between the panel and the square. So you need to block your panels to the same height as your square. So with the double knit that's 9 inches, with the Aran that's 11 inches or whatever your squares are coming out to. Um, and then once you've blocked all of your panels, you're going to join two, one each side of your Eileen square. So that'll be two end panels, that's these shorter ones that we've just made now, and then two of the longer ones as well. So as you join them, you're going to use a whip stitch join. So on this week's blog post, there is a link to a video tutorial um, for whip stitch and to show you how I do that. Okay, so just join your Eileen square with a short panel either side and then an Eileen square with a long panel either side. Okay, and then week eight we will be back to make our corner squares. Okay, so that is week six and seven four short panels, four long panels, very very easy repeats, block them, join them and then I will see you for week eight. Okay.